<laughs> the one thing that Jay Z has always said about every single interaction um, with us, he would he was always like amazed at Chad. He would in a way and like and begin, believe me, the feeling was you know there was a lot of mutual respect, but. Like when Chad would be like rapping, like performing in the video, like doing this stuff, he, and Jay and I kind of stand over the way, it's like, your brother's a star. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I wanna ask you about Big Pimp, and I know you done answered a million questions about Big Pimp. I'm up for it. You I know, know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what you. Who's <laughs> my bad? That's my scenario. I'm straight about the Black Barrio. Makes a meal about the sorry boy. I sit back and beat my scenario. Who's my bad? That's my scenario. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Those verses, were they articulated different or. Harder because you're dealing with Jay Z and he being from New York and you know people watching us. You mm -hmm. said things that was crazy enough for me, like uh, uh, some about the alphabet. Go read a book, you illiterate son of a bitch. Step up your vocab. Don't be surprised with me and you see it's coming down on your slab. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, it, like you was hitting core moments to say, hey, we we got some over well, here. Here's the thing, right? <laughs> when when we got the call to do the record, I hadn't heard the song. Right? This was before. You can like email music back and forth to people, mm -hmm. right? So I didn't hear the song until I was actually in New York in the studio. But like when I got to New York, I went to the office. We were talking in the office. They actually had just got in like a hundred pair of Rockefeller Air Force One. Okay. But I didn't really wear Air Force One. We wore Cortez. We That's wore right. Cortez tonight. <laughs> so they offered me the shot. Like, no, nah, I'm good. You know, I, I ain't tripping. Then we went to dinner. You know, so we had already kind of got to talk and get to know each other. We had no relationship. We had never actually met in person wow. at all. And then we went to the studio, and so they played a record for me, and I'm prepared to rap, right? Like, this is a song with Jay-Z. I'm coming to rap. Go get a book, you yeah. literate son of a but bitch. Come they, on, and they man. Play, and they play this song, and it's like, it's like a party record. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. I came here to get on, try to get on this shit, right? And I was like, fuck. Fuck it, let me figure it out from this <laughs> angle. So, you know, I had to determine that I was finna get on this record and do some of the best rapping I had ever done. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what it was, I was finna do my best to at the very least keep up with dude, but at my very best, just go there, just leave everybody. Mm -hmm behind in that moment. Go read a book, you illiterate son of a bitch, just step up your vocab. Don't be surprised with me and you see it's coming down on your slap. And I don't think that was his agenda. I think, you know, he really primarily saw us as, a, you know, a reputable group, yeah. but really more about club music and street music, not really operating from a, a technical, you know, aspect. So to be fair, the rhyme he wrote. You know why? Dug them, hug them, love them, leave them, but I don't trust or need them. Take them out the hood, keep them looking good. I don't think he was responding. I think I don't think he was expecting the way I responded right. to it. You know, we went into those records with different agendas. You ain't I that, just, man. just being very <laughs> Listen, honest. Man. I don't know what he went in that or what kind of record they were trying to do about these girls and whatever. <laughs> we don't talk about some girls, uh, you know, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish, but Bum B is the best rapper right now. <laughs> so, so yeah, and it, it became one of my, you know, it came a shining moment for right. me as a, as a lyricist, but in no way is that my record. I like know. Everybody knows who record that is. That is arguably the the most quoted eight bar verse Ooh. in hip hop history. Man, that's Pimp C. And I'm gonna tell you why. The whole thing shut down for me. I was hearing you and you was you was a big pimp. You were hitting that chorus and everything till I heard Pimp say what you know about them Texas boys. It was over at that he point. He always say that. Uh, the one thing that Jay-Z has always said about every single interaction um, with us, he would he was always like amazed at Chad. He would in a way and like and begin believe me, the feeling was, you know, there was a lot of mutual respect. But like when Chad would be like rapping, like performing in the video, like doing this stuff. He, and Jay and I kind of stand over the way, it's like, your brother's a star. Like that's all he ever said about Chad. Every time he was around, every time he looked at, you'd just be amazed 
had to, like, you know, there was, a, you know, Pimp, Pimp moved with audacity. Yeah. Like, and when I say that, um, and I don't say this a lot, Pimp moved with a lot of audacity. How dare he think he could move, come from Port Arthur and make a record? How dare he think his beats could be better than others? How dare he think talking in that super strong Texas Southern accent? How dare he wear glasses and make gangster music, <laughs> right? Just the audacity that he had to walk this world and be who he felt he had to be, right? It's just, it, it, it's just everything I ever saw him do, like it was always at this level of man, cause I gotta show him the Bumby. We got him showing Pee Wee. We gotta fuck him up. But we gotta hit his ass over the head. You know what I'm saying? Man. Like all of that. He was just always, always striving for greatness because he knew we had it. Nobody ever. T- it was crazy because I wouldn't have even been in UGK had I not believed in him. But nobody believed in me more than him. Mm. I know. Which is crazy, mm. you know? Bro, he said, ain't nobody for the I rap bun. I heard him that day. I said, yeah, he right. <laughs> all, look, all I had to do was rap. I ain't make no beats. I ain't mix no records or nothing. All I had to do was show up and rap. Man. So for me, if that's all you got to do, if you, work at Big Mac, if you work at McDonald's and all you do is make Big Macs, right? That's the only thing we ask you to be. You got to be the coldest Big, Big Mac, 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 Mac the motherfucker in the world. <laughs> you ever see the Domino's commercial where, the, where you see the boy flipping yes, the boxes? Sir. Because that's all he got to do. That's his job description is to make the boxes. The quick I make these hoes, quick I can go home. That's, That's it. how I operated in school, right? Quick I can learn, figure this shit out. Quick I can finish the test. Quick as I can get back to writing rhymes and fucking off in class. That was my whole thing. <laughs> so even when you see me in the studio, we just went live. If you go back and look at certain, you know, if you know where to find it, the footage is there from the recording session, but you got to know where to yeah, look and yeah. find it. Um, but you'll see, like, people when my wife was talking about because my wife was, was filming some, some things about it. And, you know, she was like, these people are tripping at how fast you writing these rhymes. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, because it's getting late. You hungry. I don't have all night for this, right? I'm trying. I, my thing was I like to get up early in the morning and go to the studio by 10 o'clock, right? Get my day started as soon as traffic is done. Go get started and, and try done. to be done by 3, 4 o'clock yes, so I could beat traffic home. Because I still got other responsibilities outside of this rap shit, particularly now, right? Oh, but yeah. I always felt my, my primary responsibility is to my family, to be available for my family. So I don't go to the studio like most niggas go to the studio to smoke and drink and fuck off. You know, most people go to the studio to get away from home. Mm-hmm. I go to the studio because that's how I take care of home. Wow. But I would that's always it. much rather be at home in my house with my family. It's wow. surprising that you said that um, you would even take that long because to me, every story I've heard is like, oh, they all say, Bun they don't play come by in, that. do his thing, and he, he leaves. <laughs> so I've never heard you staying that long in the studio. Yeah, so no, you say I mean, for my sessions, yeah, because I'm going to say I'm going to concentrate on some of this stuff. Now, I'm not going to take long to write the rhyme, okay. but particularly, I like a certain, a very familial environment, mm-hmm. a very loose and open environment. I don't want niggas walking on eggshells in my room. Don't hold nothing back. Be who you're supposed to be. Feel comfortable Mm -hmm. in this space so I can get the best out of you. And flow. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not trying to scare you into giving me your best. I want you to want to give me your yes. best because if you in a comfortable environment with somebody that's not finna walk in with some rhymes he wrote two years ago to a beat you made last night, no, I'm finna sit there, you, that's a brand new beat, I'm finna write you a brand new rhyme. Wow. We finna build this shit right here, right now. Cause you could talk about some shit on Monday, right? See some shit on Tuesday. Write the rhyme on Wednesday, lay it on Thursday, and then Friday some better, bigger, more incredible shit happen. But you can't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because you already talked about some old shit. Yeah. All my rhymes, anybody tell you, I don't walk in with no tablet. I ain't no tablet. I got to talk about this one I, song. I walk in and write that whole right then and there. I got Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.